Hello and welcome to the Medics Guide. Today we're going to cover developmental displays of the hip. So like always, grab your pen and paper and let's get started. So here's a picture of the femur and the pelvis. And the arrow is what we all know as the hip joint. And it's at this point here that the femur articulates with the acetabulum of the pelvis. Now any abnormality in the shape, size or orientation of the femoral head, the acetabulum or both, is referred to as hip dysplasia. Now this can lead to three main things. Unstability, subluxation, and dislocation. Now a hip is unstable when the tight fit between the femoral head and the acetabulum is lost, and the femoral head is then able to move within or outside the confines of the acetabulum. Now subluxation of the hip refers to incomplete contact between the articular surfaces of the femoral head and the acetabulum. And lastly, a dislocated hip, like I've written, has no contact between the femoral head and the acetabulum. Now, developmental dysplasia of the hip is slightly more common on the left side of the hip, and also 20% of cases are bilateral. Now, I've listed, I've listed some risk factors for this condition and if there's one thing from this video that I want you to remember is these because I've made them so easy to remember because I've put them into seven F's. So here are the seven F's. We've got female which for some reason are six times more likely to get this condition. Feet first, so if the baby is born in the breech position and this is because when the baby is in this position there's increased mechanical force on, on the hip joint itself. A positive family history firstborn child now this is a strange one but the reason is because as the first child the mother's uterus is not stretched out and this essentially puts more pressure onto the hip joint fluid and this really refers to oligohydramnios which is a lack of fluid in the amniotic cavity now the fluid usually helps to expand the uterus and with less fluid the uterus isn't as expanded and there's more pressure on the baby itself. The written fat kid and that essentially just refers to macrosomia and certain foot deformities like a calcaneo valgus foot deformity which is very common in children. So remember these seven F's and this will help you remember some of the risk factors for this condition. Now we do do screening uh, and routine ultrasound uh, screening is done but only if the child meets at least one of these categories. So they are a first degree family history of hip problems in early life so it doesn't have to just be dysplasia, the breach presentation at or after 36 weeks and multiple pregnancy and if any of these three do match with the child then what we'll do is a routine ultrasound examination that's normally done around six weeks. Uh, as I've written, all infants are screened at both the newborn examination and that's normally done at one or two days of age uh, and also the six week baby check using two tests, the Barlow and Ortolani. And I'm going to go into both of these now. So these are two examinations that are really, really important in this condition. So I'll start with Barlow's test. Now, when we do Barlow's test, we actually attempt to dislocate the femur from the acetabulum. And the way that we do this is we, first of all, if you look at this, we adduct and then push in a posterior direction. And this, if positive, if there is dysplasia, will dislocate the hip. Now, Ortolani's test is done only after the hip has been dislocated. And the main idea of doing this is to reduce this dislocated hip. So we, do, we move in the opposite direction and we do an abduction and an anterior medial force is applied to the greater trochanter. And that should pop the hip joint back into place and reduce the dislocation. And if that happens, we've got an Ortolani positive test. There's some other important factors to include, like I've written, uh, the length of the leg 
as you may as you can imagine in dysplasia it may be shorter the level of knees when the hips and knees are bilaterally flexed and this is a different test in restricted abduction of the hip inflection so moving on to imaging as you can imagine ultrasound is generally used to confirm the diagnosis now x-rays aren't really that good because the newborn in the newborn the femoral head and acetabulum are largely cartilaginous so we tend to just go for an ultrasound uh, it's the investigation of choice to evaluate uh, ddh uh, in infants younger than four and a half months and they're quite useful especially when the examination findings are more subtle if the child the infant is greater than four and a half months then we can do an x-ray and that's because as a child grows you can see the dislocation on x-rays but you, what we do need to remember is that the pelvis is still relatively immature and so i would say before you move on to looking at some of these x-rays just familiarize yourself with a lot of child x-rays just to get used to the landmarks now management wise generally they spontaneously stabilize within a few weeks however if they don't as you can see from this picture we use a pavlik harness and this is a harness specifically designed to gently position the baby's hips so they are aligned with the joint and to also keep the hip joint secure now most doctors recommend that babies wear this harness or brace full time for around 6 to 12 weeks and they allow motion while the hips are flexed greater than 90 degrees as well as abduction and the treatment is then continued until this hip becomes stable uh, and then you'll do another Barlow and Ortolani test just to test and hopefully they should be negative. Now babies are checked every week or two to adjust the fit of this harness as you can see in these pictures. Uh, just check the progress, see how they're doing and also screen for certain complications that you might get like radio, uh, femoral nerve palsy. Sorry. Now if this doesn't work then as a last resort uh, surgery can be required. As always, surgery does have its own risks, and one of them being avas avascular necrosis. So just to finish things off, let's just go through a couple of questions. So you're doing a six week check on the baby girl, which of the following best describes the Barlow test for developmental dysplasia of the hip? So we know that the, the Barlow and, and the Ortolani test are to dislocate and reduce the articulation of the femur to the acetabulum the way that i remember it is b comes before o so b we are dislocating the articulated femoral head whereas in otolani's we are reducing another question now a 28 year old lady is on the postnatal having delivered her first baby at 38 weeks gestation she had an elective lower segment C-section as her baby was in the breech position with a failed ECV attempt at 37 weeks. Both mother and baby appear to be happy and healthy and there is no family history of any medical conditions. The baby's newborn examination was unremarkable. The mother mentions that one of the leaflets given to her during her antenatal appointments discussed screening for developmental dysplasia of the hip and asks you whether her baby will need further tests. Now, if you remember when we just covered the screening beforehand, there were three main criteria. The first one was any family history of early hip problems in life. The second one was breach position at 36 weeks or later. And the last one was multiple pregnancy. And you can see quite clearly there's a breach position at 37 weeks. And so an ultrasound is required. Now, the question is, do we do it at 72 hours or... Do we do it at six weeks? And as I mentioned, it is a routine ultrasound and we tend to normally do this at six weeks. So that's the answer here. Ultrasound screen at six weeks after birth. And the last question, a 38 year old woman who has a three month old baby comes to see you as her friend's baby has had a hip ultrasound and she believes it is unfair that this has not been offered to her child. You explain to her that only babies who have risk factors for hip dysplasia are offered an ultrasound. And which of the following is a risk factor for hip dysplasia? Now, I told you that these questions come up all the time. The seven Fs. So we need to find one that's in these answers. So forceps delivery 
It, it does begin with F, but that's not the answer. Maternal age greater than 40, no. Breach presentation, ventrous delivery, and maternal obesity. So we know that feet first was one of the seven Fs, and that is a breach presentation. So that's the answer. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much if you made it this far. Just another video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments section below. And I'll be back with another video soon.